I'm excited to show you how you can make my healthier peppermint cheesecake with a few surprise ingredients. I'm adding cottage cheese and white sweet potatoes to give a nutrition protein boost and a rich and creamy texture. It's also naturally sweetened with maple syrup and coconut sugar. Crushed peppermint candy is sprinkled throughout the cheesecake and it's topped with a delicious chocolate ganache. The chocolate crust is made gluten-free with almonds and oat flour. We're gonna start by prepping our sweet potato and I love using them because they add a lot of structure to the cheesecake as well as some nutritional value. But the flavor is very subtle and they have a natural sweetness to them which just adds to the flavor of the cheesecake. You'll need two cups of cubed cooked sweet potatoes, which is about two medium sweet potatoes or maybe one really large sweet potato. So all you're gonna do is go ahead and peel your sweet potato, chop it into some bite-sized pieces, and then you're gonna want to cook it in some boiling water, or my preferred method is to steam it. So all you do is use one of these little steamer baskets, you put it inside of a pot, you fill the pot with water just until it reaches the bottom of the steamer basket, and then you put it over your stove with the lid on top. And then I set my heat to a medium high for about 15 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are very fork tender. And then I take the pan off the stove and then very carefully with a towel, I would lift out the steamer basket and then I just let it rest on my counter until the sweet potatoes cool. This works best to do about an hour before you'll be making your cheesecake or you could even do it a day in advance and then store your cooked sweet potatoes in the fridge. So we can go ahead and set these aside. It works best to use a food processor to make the crust as well as the cheesecake filling. To make the crust, we first wanna grind down half a cup of almonds. Then we'll put on the lid and run it for maybe 30 seconds or until those almonds are nice and fine. So that only took about 15 seconds to grind the almonds. Now we can add our additional ingredients, which includes one cup of oat flour, and you can use store-bought flour, or you can take some old-fashioned oats or quick oats, and using your food processor or even a high-speed blender, just blend those oats for maybe 15 to 30 seconds, and you will have a very fine flour. Next, we'll add a fourth a cup of coconut sugar, fourth a cup of cocoa powder, fourth a cup of almond butter, which gives it some really delicious flavor as well as texture, fourth a cup of maple syrup, teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of melted coconut oil. And then we'll put on our lid and mix this until it's well combined. Ooh, that looks great. Now you can check the consistency of this crust by just taking some of it and pushing it against the side of your container. And if it sticks to the side and holds its shape, then you know it has the perfect amount of moisture. But if it's still too crumbly to stick to the side, then just add one teaspoon more of coconut oil and mix until it is tacky enough to stick to the side. Now, if it seems to be a little bit too oily, you can add in just a tablespoon of oat flour until it dries out just a bit. Now we want to press our crust into our nine inch springform pan. And I'm just gonna spray it with some coconut oil to make sure we have an easy release. And then we can just dump the crust inside. And then I'm just gonna take my spatula to kind of spread it out evenly throughout my pan. As I spread it, I'm gonna start building it up around the edges. And then I'm just gonna go in with my hands and start pressing it up against the sides. And I find it works best to work on the sides first and then press in the bottom. And you want to go up about an inch and a half on the sides of the pan. So I'm just pushing it against the side and then pushing down on the top as well with my fingertips. Now I'm just gonna go around with my thumb and fingers and then just push it down so it's nice and even on top. Now that the sides have been pressed in, I can go around and start pressing down the bottom. And then a really easy hack for getting that nice right angle inside of the crust is to just use a metal measuring cup that has that little right angle built in. Then you just take it and gently press it against the wall and kind of wiggle it back and forth and then just move all the way around your crust. And it's going to push it in nice and firm down in that corner. You can also kind of push down on it as well to make sure the bottom of the crust is nicely reinforced. Well, that looks great. It was very easy and hashtag satisfying. Now we can set this aside while we make our cheesecake filling. To make the cheesecake filling, you'll first want to wash and dry your food processor to make sure we don't have any of the little chunks from the crust in our cheesecake. And then we're going to add 16 ounces of cream cheese, which is two blocks of cream cheese. And to give it a protein boost as well as an extra creamy texture, we're going to add half a cup of cottage cheese. And you can use large curd, small curd, non-fat, low-fat, whatever your preference. And then we'll add a third of a cup of maple syrup, half a cup of coconut sugar, two tablespoons of tapioca starch, two teaspoons of lemon juice, 
half a teaspoon salt. And to enhance that peppermint flavor, we're going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of peppermint extract. And a little goes a long ways. Now to enhance the peppermint aesthetic, I'm gonna go ahead and add some pink food coloring. And there's lots of really great organic options to choose from. And you can adjust it to meet your preference. And then we'll put on our lid and blend this on high until it's perfectly smooth. Now if your cream cheese was cold right out of the fridge, you may need to let this blend for about an extra minute until it's really soft and creamy. I find it works best to mix all of the other ingredients and then mix in the sweet potatoes at the end. So we're going to go ahead and add our two cups of our steamed and cooled sweet potatoes. And we'll put on our lid and blend this until smooth. Now halfway through mixing, I find it works well to take your spatula and just make sure you scrape down the sides because we want to have all of it that's in the bowl to be well incorporated so that it goes smooth into our crust. So then I'll go ahead and let this mix a little longer. Now I'm just gonna use my spatula and then spoon this right into our prepared crust. We want to let it pile up in the middle and then we'll spread it around to the edges. This smells so good. Now we'll take our spatula and then just turn the crust and gently press it towards the outer edge. And this will just help make sure that the edge stays nice and neat and clean. Now once we've spread the filling, we'll go ahead and give it a few taps, just to make sure we don't have any air bubbles. And then I'm gonna place this in the freezer while I prepare the chocolate ganache. And I might just have to have a little sample from the spatula. Mm. That is so yummy. <laughs> to make the ganache, we're gonna start with a fourth a cup of chocolate chips. And then we're gonna melt them down in the microwave. Now we want to do it in 30 second intervals, taking them out to stir them in between so that they don't overheat. So this is going into my microwave for 30 seconds. So after the first 30 seconds, you can see that it's just barely starting to melt. So I'm just gonna give it a little stir and then put it back in the microwave for a second 30 seconds. So after our second round of 30 seconds, you can see that it is starting to melt. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a good stir but it's not quite there yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in for an additional 20 seconds. So after an additional 20 seconds, it is now perfect. So I'm just gonna stir this around just to make sure I don't have any little clumps. Now to make this rich and creamy, I'm gonna go ahead and add a fourth a cup of heavy cream, but you could also use coconut cream for a dairy-free option. I know at first it looks a little strange, but just keep stirring because it will come together. So after a minute of stirring, that is now smooth and creamy. And now I've taken my cheesecake out of the freezer so we can pour our chocolate ganache on top. Now you can decide if you want to cover the entire cheesecake with the chocolate or if you want to leave a gap between the chocolate and the edge of your crust. I like to leave about a one inch gap so that I can see that really beautiful pink cheesecake filling. So I'm just gonna spread my chocolate in a big circle. And then using my spatula, I can very gently push the chocolate to the outer edge. And this will keep it nice and neat. So now that our chocolate ganache is spread on top, we're gonna to put this back into the fridge. Now you will want to let this chill for several hours so that that cheesecake filling can set before you slice and serve it. And if you're a little shorter on time, you can put it into the freezer for about 30 minutes just to give it a jump start. So here's my cheesecake after spending about 20 minutes in my freezer for a kickstart, and then it was in my fridge for an hour. So I'll go ahead and undo the ring. Oh, look at that beautiful cheesecake. I'll go in and cut out a piece. Oh, that looks so good. Ooh, look at that. It <laughs> looks amazing. Now you can serve this cheesecake as is, or you can make it a little extra special. Now by extra, I mean adding some whipped cream as well as our crushed peppermint candy. Let's spray some cream on top. Depending on the type of peppermint candy you're gonna be using, here's a really easy hack to make some individual servings. Just take your package with the one candy cane, smash it with a heavy object <laughs> into your small pieces and then cut the end off your bag and sprinkle your candy right on top. Oh, that is so cute. All right, now for the best part. <laughs> Crunchy. <laughs> mm. That tastes incredible. That is a delicious burst of cheesecake and peppermint and chocolate all in one bite. First, I get the creamy smooth texture of the cream cheese layer, which I would never guess has sweet potato in it. And then I get a little bit of that chocolate crust that has so much flavor with the oat and the almonds. And then I get the crunch that comes in from the peppermint candy, which provides the perfect amount of sweetness. And I love that it's made with clean natural ingredients that are gonna leave me feeling good even after I eat it. 
but of course this is a dessert and needs to be eaten with moderation. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my kitchen and I've included a link to the full recipe and it's in the video description below and it goes to my website gentletummy.com and I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel and if you know someone else who you think would love this recipe please share this video with them and I cannot wait to have you hang out with me again in my kitchen.